Thank you for joining us for the Ministry of the Word at Redeemed Christian Fellowship in Phoenix, Arizona. We hope the Ministry of the Word will be a blessing to you. See, I just want to speak the name of Jesus. And I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Over every heart and every mind. I know there is peace within your presence, and I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Till every dark addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom, and I speak Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is love. Break every stronghold, break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. I just want to speak, I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Over fear and all anxiety To every soul held captive by depression And I speak Jesus Your name is power Your name is power Your name is healing Your name is love Break every stronghold the streets, Jesus and the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus, shout Jesus from the mountains, shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus and the streets, Jesus and the darkness over every enemy. For my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus and the streets. Jesus and the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Give him glory. Hallelujah. We lift up that mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. By that name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue must proclaim that Jesus is the Lord of lords. He's the King of kings. Amen. Hallelujah. God's so good, isn't he? 
Well, if you would take a second, meet, greet those around you, let everyone know you are so happy to see them this morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to Redeemed Christian Fellowship this morning. Glad to have you all here. Braved this cold, rainy weather. <laughs> I don't know if it's raining right now. It was sprinkling on me on my way in. So, yeah, off and on. <laughs> it's a good change of pace once in a while. Have a little overcast. And then soon the sun will come. <laughs> in all its glory. I like the heat, so no complaining here. But I do like the change every once in a while. It's nice. Um, couple of announcements, just to let you know, we, we do have prayer Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock. You're always welcome to come and join us. If you can't be here, um, send in your prayer request. Message the church, message somebody that you know at the church that can get it to the, to the right people, and we'll make sure we add you to our prayer time throughout the week. There is no reason to go through the struggles that this world would throw at us by yourself. None at all. God provides everything we need. He is our all in all. He supplies that protection, that support, everything we need, the healing, the finance, whatever it is, he supplies it. So don't try and faith it out there by yourself. Keep your faith up. Definitely do that. Stay in the word, stay in prayer, stay built up, but allow others to come alongside of you. And that's what we like to do. So please um, reach out if you have um, prayer requests, just a little bit of extra support. It doesn't hurt to have someone else praying for you. <laughs> and on that note, we should be praying for one another. <laughs> even if, even during the week, just go through the seats and, and God knows their names. If you don't know their names, God knows their names. Just say that one person that's that in that second row or whatever we'll just walk through the seats in your mind and God will help you walk through it and pray for each other it's important we pray for one another we do have service this afternoon it is at one o'clock right here in the sanctuary I think we're setting up in the sanctuary usually lately we have been anyway um, it is a little bit more of a casual setting even though it's here in the sanctuary but please come back after lunch and join us um, dig into that word it is also live streamed so you can get these on Facebook <laughs> Somebody is not happy. <laughs> Our midweek is Thursday at 6.30, and that is a live stream service. Um, we do we have recently opened that up as a Bible study, uh, even though it is still live streamed. It is at Dave and Debbie's home, so if you would like to ever join us out there, um, please reach out to um, anybody. <laughs> we'll get the address for you. If we don't know it, we'll get it for you. But please come and join us, 6.30, Thursday nights. That's our midweek service, um, and so all are welcome to come and join that. It's also on the Facebook, so you can always pick up that live stream. Um, we do have a podcast that comes out midweek, Tuesday, Wednesday usually, uh, and that goes to Spreaker and then gets moved over to YouTube. So you can go out and get those teachings and stay filled up with the word. It's important that we kept our, keep ourselves filled up and lifted up. Amen? All right, I'm turning it over to Mr. David, it looks like, and uh, just going to take the next step. God is so good, isn't he? 
Uh, this morning is missions fund. This is over and above your tithe. If you would like an offering envelope to give, feel free to raise your hand. Brad, our loan officer this morning. I sound like I said loan officer this morning. Our loan usher this morning would be more than happy to provide you one. If you look around and see one of your friends isn't here, it's about half the church is missing, text them, tell them we missed you. If you look around and see someone you don't have their number, well then they're probably not your friend. So you're off the hook and you don't have to text them. You're welcome. God is so good, isn't he? Genesis 17, in verse 1, when Abram was 90 years old and 9, how many know a 99-year-old person? I don't. None yet. Nobody knows a 90. That's pretty old, right? That's, that's old. And if you haven't had kids by the time you're 99, yeah, maybe adopt. <laughs> but you're probably not going to have kids from a natural standpoint, right? But, but God said to him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And in verse 6, he says, or verse 5, he says, Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thou shalt be called Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. Notice how God speaks to Abraham. He says, a father of many nations have I made thee. He already, it was already done in God's mind. So when God, God, Romans chapter 4 says, God calls those things that be not as though they are. So Matthew, whenever he sees me, he has a habit of saying, Dad, you're old. And I say, and rich. <laughs> so he's like, Dad, you're old. I'll be walking through the house and I hear, Dad, you're old. And I'm like, and rich. Why? Because I'm answering that, right? I don't have a problem getting old, but I want the promises to come to pass. Amen. I want everything that God promised for me to come to pass. That's why God changed Abram's name because Abram had to keep hearing what God was saying every time that he looked around and saw all these young whippersnappers having kids and he's 99 years old without a kid and God's telling him you're going to be the father of many nations and in your mind you're like how how is that like I'm old right and back then they lived to be old, 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 like they lived a long time. But still, when you look at your natural circumstances, you need to be able to answer those, maybe change your name, right? Maybe change what you say about yourself. That's a name change. Maybe stop calling those things that are as though they are and start calling those things that be not as though they are. Because as Charles Capp says, if you keep saying what you have, you will just keep having what you say. But if you'll start confessing what the Word of God says and what the promises of God say about you and who you are and what you can have and what you can do, you will change your future to conform to what the Word of God says. Amen. So let this be an encouragement to you. Amen. Concerning your finances, you don't have to be poor. Jesus became poor. So you don't have to be poor anymore. Amen. You are rich. Not just from a spiritual standpoint, but from a, from a natural, carnal standpoint. You're blessed with faithful Abraham. Amen. God, we thank you, Lord. For this offering that goes out, we thank you, Father, as we put seed in the ground, we thank you, Lord, that it produces a harvest, a hundredfold return coming back to us. <clears throat> we thank you for the power of the seed, God. We thank you, Lord, that that seed goes out, springs up, produces a harvest, and we call in the harvest in Jesus' name. Amen. Good. Whoop. And then we're going to change up order of service a little bit. We're going to be kind of doing the live stream a little earlier, and so we're going to do our tithes and offerings before worship now. So that way, when pastor comes out, he can just jump up as soon as he's ready and start teaching, ministering, whatever he, he is directed to do. So this is now huh, your tithe. So our loan usher, Brad, would be more than happy to provide you an envelope. Please fill out your envelope in its entirety. You can also give online. There's multiple ways to give. With the envelope, please fill it out in its entirety. That helps Debbie with accounting to be able to process that through quicker, easier. Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. 
it says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. Now notice it says bring. He didn't say give tithe, because you can't give what's not yours, right? The tithe belongs to God. The tithe is 10%. So when you increase the first tithe, the first 10%, that belongs to God. Now you bring it into his house. Where's his house? Well, you could go to heaven, but please come back. It'd be easier if you just brought it to God's house here, where Jesus is the head of the local church, and Jesus is our high priest who goes before us, amen, after the order of Melchizedek, right, who Abraham brought tithes after slaughtering the kings that came up against Sodom and Gomorrah, amen. And I will rebuke. Now bring you all the tithes and stores. There may be meat in my house. That's our part. And God said this, prove me now. Now this needs to be your confession. So when you bring your tithe, don't just bring your tithe out of habit and forget that you did it. Right? Don't just come in and do something as a, as a, as a, uh, a churchy form of doing. Out of a hobby. Out of a habit. Come in by faith. Put faith behind what you're doing. So then after you bring your tithe, then you say this, I'm proving God. He's the Lord of hosts. And I'm proving that he will open up the winds of heaven and pour out a blessing upon me that there shall not be enough room to receive it. And he'll rebuke the devourer for my sakes. And the devourer will not be able to destroy the fruits of my ground. Neither will my vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call me blessed. And all nations shall call me blessed, and I am a delightsome land. That's the promise for the tither. Amen. Amen. Thank God for biblical principles that can far surpass, supersede, annihilate anything that the world is trying to do in your finances. Amen. God cares about you. He cares about your heart. He cares about your emotions. He cares about your body, your healing, and he cares about your supply, your finances. God is the source of our supply. Amen? So it's a small thing to come to God and worship him and honor him with the bringing of our tithes. Amen? God, we thank you, Lord, that you are a good father. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your promises. More than that, God, we thank you, Lord, that you are a loving, tender father, full of mercy, full of favor, full of goodness. God, we thank you, Lord, that your goodness follows us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that the windows of heaven are opened up and your blessing is pouring down upon us, Lord, so we can be a greater blessing, so we can further your kingdom, and so we can live a good life as you've delivered for us and promised us. And we give you the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Worship our King.
You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. Welcome everyone to our wonderful sanctuary. We love you all. We're so thankful that you're all here with us today. God is so good. Yes. Pastor Walter asked me to teach this morning. He will be back next week. Yes. I'm so happy about that. Um, we love our pastor yes. and we right. need him. And we're just so thankful that God has blessed us with such a wonderful uh, gift to help right. us in our lives. Um, God is so good. Let's start with prayer. Thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Lord, that your anointing is on your word to help us, to teach us, to develop us, to guide us, instruct us. We thank you, Lord, that it changes our hearts and affects our minds. And we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Henry had donut by my notes. <laughs> okay. So, um... Pastor Walter has three new manuals that have come out. We haven't um, uh, had opportunity to publish and put them out there, but if you would like to pre-order one, you can come see me, um, and I will happily help you get that set up to do, um, and we can get them ready for you. But I am going to be teaching out of one of those manuals called Understanding the Blood Covenant, and I've used that um, in um, communion when we've taken up communion recently, and it's powerful. It's so powerful. And so when he asked me what I want to teach on, of course, first thing I asked was, can I use one of your books? And uh, um, when he said, sure, of course, and he said, which one? And then we kind of went through a list of them, and I kept coming back to Covenant because I, it just blessed me so much, and it's one of my new favorite manuals. Um, it's probably my number one right now. They always change, but it's probably number one right now. So God is so good. Um, I'm going to be teaching out of... Um, on, not out of, I'm going to be teaching on honoring covenant, a devotion of the heart. And um, so for uh, just a rehash of what covenant is, covenant is um, a, a pact, a, 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 what's the word? It's um, an established, a, like, pact deal between two parties. And so, like, say there's a covenant between two countries, um, one will defend the other if there's uh, an attack against the country, or um, uh, it's, a, it's always bringing a benefit to both parties. And so um, uh, our covenant is with God. And um, covenant was a heart devotion 
for Abraham. And so that's, uh, um, we're going to talk about the devotion of the heart. And so it, it, you know, we're kind of in the middle of the document, so get the book. <laughs> uh, but uh, the, the covenant was a heart devotion for Abraham. It wasn't just a set of laws. Now, there, if you read through the manual, you understand that there were different phases of covenant. Um, started out, uh, uh, um, of the heart ended or kind of went through a phase where there was a, is through the law, through the law of Moses, the set of laws that helped them keep covenant. And then, uh, it came back to, of the heart. And so it was, a, it wasn't just a set of laws for Abraham. Covenant with God was based on promises and a deep seated trust. We know that trust from a New Testament setting is faith or believing. And so Abraham trusted God. He believed in God. He had faith in God. And we know that that's what that is. So for both God and Abraham, the devotion to that trust was revealed through the outward sign of circumcision. Now, so their covenant was uh, established through circumcision. And we know what that means. And so that was the sign of covenant. It was meant to be, though, an inward reflection of the heart life inwardly devoted to, relying upon for the satisfaction and well-being of both parties. Now, are you satisfied in life? Are you satisfied with what God is doing for you? And is God satisfied with you? Because that's what covenant is. Covenant is for the satisfaction and well-being of both parties. Now, God always keeps his side of the deal. He always protects us, preserves us, delivers us, uh, heals us. That's God's side of the deal. Now, our side... What's our side? It's a devotion of the heart. Um, real quick, I'm going to plug in a scripture, Psalms 91. <clears throat> and this really will uh, uh, capture a heart attitude of our perspective. And so verse, I'm going to start in verse 14. And we'll go through 16. Because he hath set his love upon me. Because we have set our love upon God. Because. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. And with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. What did they do? What did he do to earn that promise? Because he hath set his love upon me. What is love? It's a devotion. A commitment. So it was a heart devotion. Because he did those things, God's promise to him was to answer him, be with him in trouble, deliver him and honor him, and with long life will I satisfy him. I've noticed in my life that as I get older, Dave's talking about getting older, as I get older, life gets better. Every, I just noticed, the older I get, the better life is, the more satisfied I am. Uh, And so I, I want to, uh, I want to, I want to, uh, like people are so afraid of aging and they try to do everything they can about aging. I want to reinvent, re, uh, re, uh, re, um, look at what aging does for us. It satisfies us. Amen. So we should be satisfied Amen. as we get older with what God is doing for us. Amen. All right, let's get back to the notes. Uh, <laughs> we're going to go to Genesis chapter 17. We're going to look at uh, the old covenant, the Old Testament sign of covenant first. That's in verses 10 through 12. So this is my covenant, which you shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man, child among you shall be circumcised and you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin and it shall be a token, a token, a sign or proof of the covenant betwixt me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Every man child in your generations, he that is born of the house or brought or bought with money of any stranger, which is not of thy seed. So what was the sign of, t- of a covenant? That if you were circumcised, that was a sign that you were part of that covenant with God. In Deuteronomy 10, 15 through 16, uh, we'll start to see a transition of that sign of covenant. Only the Lord hath the delight in thy fathers to love them, and he chose their seed after them, even you above all people as it is this day. Circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart, and be no more stiff-necked. So this is an important transition. It is now showing us that the true intention of 
of what the true intention of circumcision was all about, which was a sign of covenant. So anyone who, uh, uh, who was circumcised was, was uh, again, that was the sign that they were part of that covenant. You know, in, uh, in nations, um, there are certain things that, that maybe tribes will do. They'll, to show that they're in covenant with another tribe. You know, they might do like a, a tattoo or some kind of marking on their skin to show that they're in covenant with this other tribe. And so anyone who comes against them will see, oh, no, they've got someone backing them up. I don't want to mess with them because they're going to come after me if I mess with them. You know, so that was the sign of covenant. And it, the, the important factor in covenant that the believers, both in the Old and New Testament, were, were to go through was an inward change where the sin nature would be cut away from them as depicted in the foreskins of their hearts. And so, I love this. It's an inward change. How do we know that we've been changed inwardly? Let's go to 2 Corinthians 5.17. Okay. There is, I'm sorry, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Amen. That old man, that old sin nature that certain uh, um, denominations like to uh, almost glorify, just an old sinner saved by grace. I'm not, I'm not an old sinner anymore. I am a new creature. Amen. All old things are passed yeah. away. Behold, Amen. all things are are become new. And if any of you listened to Pastor Nancy's teachings um, in just a couple weeks ago uh, during her Holy Ghost meetings, uh, she talked about uh, some things that, you know, she's talking, having a conversation with God, and she, she had mentioned to God that there were some things within herself that she didn't like and that she wanted to change. And God brought her to this scripture, and he showed her uh, that, that old things are passed away. So those things in you that you don't like, change them. Because you are new. You are made new. Amen. You can get rid of those old things, those old uh, uh, um, characteristics. Uh, what's the personalities even? Old personalities that you don't like. There are certain things that uh, you guys, uh, most of you knew me uh, as, a, as a teenager. <laughs> and you knew the struggles I had uh, with confidence and how much I lacked it. <laughs> uh, you would look at me and my face would turn red. I couldn't talk to you without, without uh, being embarrassed or shy. And most of the time, my conversations would include an apology for absolutely no reason at all. You know, I just couldn't help but say sorry to you. And so those old things in me, I hated those things about myself. And, uh, and uh, uh, through a process of counseling and, and, uh, um, and getting in the word, I saw myself as new. Amen. And those things that, that used to control me and dictate to me and tell me how I needed to act how I couldn't do certain things, how I would never be able to do anything for God, those things are passed away. Amen. I am a new creature in Christ Jesus. And now, and I was so encouraged by what Pastor Nancy said because it, 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 it reminded me there are still things that I'm like, why do I do that? Why does my mind do that? I don't have to let it do that any longer. I don't have to let things uh, go over and over and over and over again in my mind until I can't do anything but think about those things. I don't have to allow those things Amen. to control my Amen. thoughts any longer. I can change those things in myself. Okay, so there was to be a change in their behavior. In their behavior, listen to that. They had to behave a certain way. And in their belief system. Why? Why did they have to change those things? Because they had now cut covenant with God. And they had to be compatible with God. They were made new. They were changed. They were taken out of the current position that they were in and put into a new position, a new position in God. And so they had to behave a certain way. They had to talk a certain way. Yeah. They had to, uh, to, 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 to be a certain way in order to be, remain in that covenant with God. Amen. Okay, so Deuteronomy 30, verse 6. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to, the, to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thine soul that thou mayest live. To love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul. 
What is covenant for us? It's a devotion of the heart. Amen. How do we keep our side of covenant? It's a devotion of the heart. True circumcision that honors covenant lies in the heart. Uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a complete devotion, an unbreakable bond between you and God. We have to understand that once the sin nature has been dealt with, the believer's love for God can go unhindered. Once you deal with the sin nature, once you deal with it, once you make a decision that I will no longer act this way, I will no longer be dictated by my lusts, by the lusts of my flesh. I will no longer uh, be controlled by the appetites of my flesh. I will no longer be that person. Once you deal with that, your love for God can go unhindered, allowing the relationship between God and his people, well, let's make it personal, between God and yourself, or myself, uh, to blossom and become more interactive and more successful spiritually, physically, and economically. How do we become successful in all areas of our life? Our love for God will allow our relationship to blossom with God. Amen. That's Amen. how. The only way you can be successful in life, the only way you can be satisfied in life is through God. Yes. You will Amen. never, ever, yeah. ever find satisfaction for, a long, for the long length of your life without God. You cannot find satisfaction in the world because the world is uh, set on destruction yes. and decay and death. Yep. That will not give you the desires of your heart. That will not give you those things that God put in you, the longings that you have. That will not give you what you want. Nope. The only way to ever succeed in life, the only way to ever uh, uh, prosper spiritually, physically, and economically is through God. Yep. Amen. Amen. This is the full intention and purpose behind covenant where both parties are satisfied and receive from each other devotion to the promises of covenant. Both parties Oh, my Lord, I never, ever want to displease God. I, I can't imagine getting before him and, and him being displeased with my life and the things that I should have done for him. That is uh, the longing of my heart is to get before him and have him say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant in whom I am well pleased. I, 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 there are things that I make mistakes in, but... God is so merciful and faithful and just yes. to forgive me of those yes. things and Amen. to help me overcome in life. I'm not held back by those things that held me back before. Amen. So although we know that under the first covenant, which is in reference to the Mosaic covenant that was shaped by the Abrahamic covenant, details, get the book. That will explain everything for you. <laughs> uh, for the most part, the believer could not succeed in their devotion to honor covenant with God. Why? Because they lacked, they, that, that covenant lacked the ability to change them. Yeah. They, had, uh, they had to uh, uh, obey the law under their flesh. They weren't made new under the old covenant. Right. We are beginning to see both the need for a new and better covenant and how the apostles of Christ, our Lord and Savior, helped the transition from the Old Testament or covenant to the new, which we are now in. We are now in the new covenant. Uh, let's go to Romans chapter 2, verse 28 and 29. I'm going to go ahead and start reading. For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not of the latter, whose praise is not of men but of God. So notice how this portion of scripture in the New Testament mirrors the scriptures in the Old Testament, which we just read in Deuteronomies. Deuteronomies. <laughs> Deuteronomy. So when you put these scriptures together, you realize the true purpose and intention behind covenant. What is that true purpose and intention? It is in developing a heartfelt, devoted relationship between two parties. Heartfelt devotion. Devotion. It is good to know that God is a holy God, meaning that there is no sin in God. The true essence of sanctification shines through God the Father. Therefore, we are to be holy for God is holy. This is part of that circumcision of the heart. We can be holy like God. We can make those choices 
that, uh, that, that, that uh, God would be pleased with and be holy as he is holy. Uh, Leviticus 11.44 says, For I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore sanctify yourselves. So what are you doing? Sanctifying yourself. That means making the right choices. Amen. That means when you're faced with a decision and you know it's not right, right. and you, you choose to make the right decision. That's part of sanctifying yes, yourself. Amen. And you shall be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall you defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Again, the world cannot do anything for you. It will not help you. It will not make you happy. It will not prosper you. It will do nothing for you but set out to destroy you. Yep. Amen. So 1 Peter 1.16 says, Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. So for those of you who thought, Well, that's Old Testament and Leviticus, 1 Peter says the same thing. Amen. Be ye holy, for I am holy. So this creates a compatibility that is needed in any relationship. Um, when you look at any relationship, it's impossible to have a friendship, a marriage, uh, any type of relationship when you're not compatible. Um, you know, there's all kinds of comedies written about uh, uncompatible <laughs> marriages. And, you know, they're always fighting and bickering, and it looks funny from the outside, but inside, it hurts. It's hard. It's not successful. It's not easy to walk together because they're in constant disagreement. That's not how we're designed. Uh, relationships suffer when they lack compatibility in behavior, in how they view things, and in thoughtfulness. Like with any relationship, if a person is not thoughtful of the other or mindful of the other, doesn't that create a problem? If I were to just do whatever I wanted to do without thought for Dave, I would hurt him. Amen. I would, uh, and he would look at me and think, don't you care about me? Wouldn't that create problems? Yes. You know, uh, uh, everything I do in our relationship is with consideration of what, what, how this might affect him or my kids or my family because I care. I care Amen. about him. I care about... Uh, their well-being. I care about what, what, how, how uh, they're affected, and um, of course, you know, there are times where, where I do, I do make mistakes. <laughs> you heard me. <laughs> there are times where I do, and so, uh, and and I realized, hey, that wasn't very thoughtful when, when, it, uh, when, um, when I, when I've done that, and then I feel bad because I've hurt the other person in my relationship, and so. But again, God is so merciful, He's so yes, faithful, he and He helps us when we make mistakes. Yeah. But <coughs> what, shouldn't our thoughts be on God? Yes. Yes. Shouldn't our thoughts about how, what we do be on what would, how would this affect my relationship with God? Yeah. Yeah. What would He think of what I'm thinking? Because not always in action, sometimes it's in our thoughts. What would He, how would He feel about this thought? that I'm allowing into my head. You know, uh, Kenneth Hagin uh, used to say, uh, a bird can be flying around your head, but you don't have to let it build a nest. Amen. And, Amen. And, and in correlation to the thoughts, the thoughts can be circling you and trying to, to bombard you, but you don't have to let it enter. You don't have to entertain it and think on it and dwell on it. Uh, because once you've done that, once it's entered into your heart, it becomes who you are. Yeah. becomes what you've done. Okay, Old Testament circumcision was a sign of covenant, and because covenant could not be kept, the need for a new covenant was apparent and was entered into and realized by the New Testament believers, by the New Testament or covenant. So we've entered into that. Under the new and better covenant, the New Testament, the true purpose of covenant can be fulfilled by the promises and changes that were made where the old attitudes and convictions of the heart would be cut away removing worldly practices and disobedient behaviors. The covenant can be fulfilled now. It is complete now in us because of what Christ Jesus did for us. He is uh, the only reason we're able to do this. Uh, the circumcision of the believer's heart is a token, again, a sign in all three realms, heaven, earth, and hell, that believers are in covenant with God. It's a sign. So the circumcision of your heart is a sign to the devil 
a sign to heaven and a sign to those around you of what God has done. The covenant I have with God. The devil knows. He knows I'm in covenant with God. And he knows what that covenant means. And he has no access to my life because of the covenant I have with God. The cutting away of the foreskin of the flesh represented that the sin nature had been dealt with to honor covenant with God. And by honoring covenant, the believer's relationship with God can be healthy. How can the relationship with God be healthy? By honoring the covenant we have with him. That's what this is all about. Devotion of the heart. Honoring that covenant that God uh, established with us. Covenant is based on relationship. And as with any relationship, it cannot be one-sided. We've been... uh, talking about relationships um, during the podcasts and the weekly midweek services. Um, it, uh, it, relationships can't be one-sided. And we know that God never never fails. So if there's a, if there's a problem, check yourself. Amen. <laughs> because, because God will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And he will never break his promises to you. So if you're not seeing the results of covenant in your life, it's because of yourself. Yep. Amen. It's never because of God. Right. Amen. Uh, heart conviction was a token, a mark, flag, or beacon, or evidence of being in covenant with Almighty God. It serves as a flag or beacon of God, man, the devil, and his cohorts of the commitment of covenant, which is evidence of a never-ending relationship. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk a little bit more about uh, relationships and marriage specifically, because when you enter into a marriage, you're entering into a covenant with your husband or, or you know, your man, you're entering into covenant with your wife. And so uh, when you look at me and Dave, you see that covenant without even realizing it, because you see us as one. You see us as husband and wife. You know, Kevin, without Lisa, there would be none. <laughs> you know, <Yeah>. that <laughs> you see them as one. Uh, uh, that's that covenant that you see without even realizing it because it's not a physical, tangible thing, but you see it, you understand it, you know it's there. Uh, everyone knows that we are united and, 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 and in, in a covenant relationship. Uh, uh, when the enemy looks at us, when we have covenant with God and we're in a relationship with God, when the enemy looks at us, he knows, but do you know? Because if you don't know what you have with God, if you don't understand that you're in a committed, devoted relationship with God, that your heart should long for and cry out for Him, are you going to be acting on that? Are you going to be relying on that? Uh, Let's go to Genesis 15. uh, Chapter 15, verses 13 and 14. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. He's, more, he's telling him of something that's going to happen to his seed. Now, he's in covenant with God, but he's telling him this will happen to your seed for four hundred years. But why, did that ha- why would that happen? And also that nation whom they serve, serve shall serve, I will, will I judge. And afterward they shall come out with great substance. But why did they get there in the first place? Why did they end up in bondage for 400 years? The people of God went into bondage largely because they lost sight of covenant. If you don't know what covenant you have with God, if you don't keep your end of the deal, what, what are you allowing into your life then? What bondage are you allowing into your life? The freedom in Christ is so amazing. The freedom we have in him uh, from all those afflictions of the past is just so liberating and amazing. I can't describe it uh, because I've been in bondage and I've been free. And I know that being free in Christ is better. Amen. Uh, Let's go to Galatians 3. 16, and then we're going to, ch- chapter 3, verses 16 and 19, so we're going to skip a couple verses. Um, now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not unto seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed which is Christ. And then verse 19 says, Wherefore then serveth the law? 
It was added because of transgressions, till the this, till this seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the land of a mediator. Why did the, 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 the law come to be? Because his seed couldn't keep covenant. And they ended up in bondage for 400 years. So then the law came about when Moses delivered them and brought them out of that bondage. That's when the law came because they couldn't keep covenant. And the law helped them learn how to keep covenant. What is the law? It's about our behavior. It's about how we act. You know, Amen. you can't murder, you can't steal. That's all behavior. You know, uh, uh, but first and foremost, to love the Lord your God with all your heart. Amen. First and foremost. So God instituted the law through what we call the Mosaic Covenant to teach them how to honor covenant. What is covenant? A devotion of the heart. Uh, Galatians 3.24 says, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. The law that came from Moses was our schoolmaster, which teaches us. Uh, Here we see the necessity for the law that was given to the children of Israel. The law was to serve as a teacher to help them maintain a healthy relationship with God the Father that would honor covenant, and so it is today. The sign or the token of covenant lies within the heart of the sanctified believer who walks to a great degree untainted by the sin nature. So the sign or token of the covenant is in our hearts and we walk to a great degree untainted by the sin nature. Why? Because we have a devotion to God, a heart devotion to God. This is the potential of the New Testament believer because of everything that took place when we were born again. Everything that took place brought us to this place. Even though our faith at times goes through constant testing, we now have the ability to keep covenant. Right now. Right now. No matter what test or trial you're going through, you right now have the ability to keep covenant. If we are aware that there is a commitment to keeping covenant, we are not sidetracked and become discouraged because of the manifold temptations or tests that come our way. There's a a commitment to keeping covenant with God despite the things that come against us, despite the things that try to sidetrack us, despite the things that try to get in my way of my prosperity. The devil's not going to try, not going to make it easy for me to achieve. But you know what, though? Through faith, it is easy. He can try. Yep. He can do anything he has. He has uh, nothing new to throw at me. But through faith, faith is easy. And uh, um, a lot of people think faith is hard. A lot of people think, well, I can't do that. It's too hard to believe. Why is it hard to believe? Because that's not true, sincere faith. Faith knows. It trusts. Yep. And it relies fully on what God promised yep. you. And that, when you are in that state, faith is easy. Because nothing, nothing, even if it looks like Dave was talking about, even if it looks different than the promises of God, you know that what God's word says is true above anything else. No matter what, God's word is true above anything else, any circumstance. I don't care what it looks like. You can't imagine what it looks like to see your child flown in a helicopter to a hospital not knowing if they're going to breathe when they wake up because of the circumstances that are presented to you. But God's word, God's promise to me about my children and about my family, he gave to me when I was 19 years old that I can have it all. That I can have a family, I can have a husband, yep. and I can have my children and still serve him. Yes. He promised that to me. And because he promised that to me, he's not going to let anything happen Amen. to what he's no. given me. Yep. Amen. That's his covenant with yes. me. That's his promise to me. And that's his promise to all of you. Yes. When you keep your heart devoted to him, yep. he will fulfill his promises to you. Yep. God is so good. That is all I have today. That was short, quick. Hopefully hopefully it blessed you. Yes. God is so good. Get the book. I really encourage you. Uh, 
I know a couple of you have it. <laughs> um, but God is so good. We love you all. Uh, we uh, hope you guys have a blessed week, and we will see you later. We're dismissed. Thank you for joining us today. If the ministry of the word has been a blessing to you, please consider contributing to the work of the ministry at www.redeemedcf.breezechms.com forward slash give forward slash online. You can also text to give by texting the amount you would like to give to 602-962-3848. If you have a testimony of how the ministry of the word has been a blessing to you, please send us a message on one of our social media platforms. We would love to hear from you. Thank you for your continued support of the work here at Redeemed Christian Fellowship.